Time now for Focus. Today we head to Iran, which is uh, this week marking the second anniversary of a landmark accord that it signed with world powers. Well, the agreement uh, which curbed the Islamic Republic's nuclear activities in exchange for the lifting of international sanctions was at first celebrated by Iranians. Two years later, though, progress hasn't exactly lived up to their expectations. Reza Saya reports from Tehran. signed a multi-billion dollar gas deal with Iran this month. It marked the first time a Western energy company had invested in a large-scale project in Iran since the 2015 nuclear deal between the Islamic Republic and the world powers. Iran's leadership celebrated the deal as a sign that the economy is improving. But today, three out of ten Iranians still don't have jobs. Many can't afford to get married or are still waiting to see the benefits of the agreement. I have been without a job for two years. Everywhere I apply, they tell me I'm too old. Imagine not having a job and having to afford rising costs. Either way you look at it, things are really bad. The economy is doing so poorly. Inflation is under control, but every family has someone who's unemployed. Companies are going under. It's hard to take. The frustration is in stark contrast to the street celebrations two years ago this month when the nuclear accord was signed. Iran agreed to curb its nuclear program in exchange for the lifting of international sanctions. This was the deal, many hoped, that would open relations with the West, boost the economy, and improve lives in Iran. But the billions of dollars in foreign investment promised by Iranian President Hassan Rouhani have yet to arrive. Many analysts here say the main obstacle remains U.S. policy towards Iran. After the agreement between Iran and the P5 plus 1, or the nuclear agreement, the United States never abided by its side of the bargain. Our foreign minister, Dr. Zarif, has said this repeatedly, that the United States has not adhered to either the spirit of the agreement nor the text of the agreement itself. U.S. President Donald Trump has repeatedly criticized the nuclear agreement, although stopping short of withdrawing from the deal. In the meantime, Washington's unilateral sanctions against Iran's alleged human rights violations remain in place, essentially blocking Iran from the international banking system. The banking industry of the international banking is vis-a-vis -vis Iran is not functioning. Very simple. If, for instance, if I want to transfer $1,000 for my children to Canada through the banking system is impossible. I mean, mainly is the U.S. sanctions, mainly because all the even European banks are afraid of being fined by the U.S. Treasuries in order if they work with Iran. Despite the challenges, many in Iran remain optimistic, and some signs of progress are visible. After she married an Iranian man, French pastry chef Elise LeBlanc Shafi moved to Iran and opened a bakery precisely because of the nuclear agreement. I would have never seen myself living here. But imagining an opening of this country to the world, or rather an opening of the world to this country, it really convinced me. Sahan Nazari says it was the lifting of the sanctions that partly inspired her to open up a brand new restaurant in northern Tehran, where some days nearly 40 percent of her clients are foreign tourists. It has not been insignificant. If we were still under sanctions, maybe we would not have invested all this money. Maybe there's no optimism. The entire restaurant has been designed by Italian companies. If the sanctions were still in place, maybe those companies would not be here in Iran. But analysts say it's not small business that will turn around Iran's economy. Big investment, like the ones made by Total, are key. Iran must convince other European giants to follow in Total's footsteps. Otherwise, hope and patience in Iran will wear thin. Today's Focus report coming to us from our team on the ground in Iran. To talk more about Iran, uh, Thierry Colville is an Iranian specialist, specialist in Iran, rather. Uh, Mr. Colville, good to have you with us on France 24. You've been listening to that report there. Were Iranians right to have such great expectations for this landmark deal signed with world powers, or were the benefits a little bit overestimated? Um, <clears throat> I think the, the nuclear deal has worked in the sense that uh, now Iran can export all its oil, so it has the mechanic effects on Iranian economy. Now the growth uh, rate uh, 
in uh, 2016 was uh, more than six percent. But um, that's true that, you know, there are big social issues in Iran, like unemployment, and Iran really needs a long period of growth to get out of these social issues. And that's true that the sanctions, U.S. sanctions, are threatening the European banks, and, and, and until now they have not dared to, to work with Iran. I mean, we heard in that report, uh, the, re the reporter clearly saying, look, it's not the small businesses that are opening up that's going to help relaunch uh, Iran's economy. It's the bigger uh, deals, i.e. one that we saw recently, the gas deal with Total. What's it going to take before more companies uh, head to Iran and start signing these type of high-profile deals with the country? I think it has started. I think, uh, the, as you said, the, the, the announcement of the you know, investment from Total is, is a big step. So now, you know, um, uh, an investment of $5 billion in Iran gas field is a big step. So it, I think the, the, the confidence is, is coming. Uh, we had already an investment from Peugeot. Uh, we had an investment from Renault, we, we, which is still in Iran, which it was already in Iran. So, but it's true that, you know, um, Iran, Iranian economy was isolated for a long time. Um, there are bureaucratic uh, obstacles to foreign investment in Iran. And, and the big obstacle is, the biggest obstacle is the fear of, you know, uh, new U.S. sanctions and the banks, you know, the big companies and the banks. But, you know, I think Total, the fact that Total has invested in Iran can give more confidence. And I heard that, you know, all the major energy companies, they want, again, to invest in Iran. So, so we think that a deal uh, like that with Total is likely to inspire other companies to uh, put the fear aside, essentially, and go and uh, invest more in Iran? Yes, I think uh, what I heard, you know, I think Total, Total was fearing, even the main fear of Total was U.S. sanctions and the fact that the U.S. government could scrap, as you said, uh, you know, get out of the nuclear deal. I think now they have decided that it's not possible. They are going to stay with the deal, nuclear deal, the U.S. government. So I think Total, Total said we can take the risk now of, of investing in Iran. And I think it's a big, big step and, and other companies are listening. There is, there is a huge interest in the Union market in France and in Europe. And, and I think announcements like that can, can be, you know, a sign of more confidence in, in Iranian potential. You touched on the U.S. there, Mr. Koval. There was one accusation uh, levelled at the U.S. within the report which said that they're not necessarily playing by their side of the bargain as it was intended to uh, two years ago when this was signed. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? It is true and false. You know, what is in, uh, remarkable with the U.S. sanctions, but... They are not really sanctioned, but the fact that, you know, there, there is a fear among European banks since the, the you know, the fine that uh, BNP Paribas to pay off around $9 billion. So since, since this experience, the, the European banks have a big fear, you know, of, like working with Iran is going to, to get them a fine of this amplitude and, and, and getting, uh, having no, no more license to work in the U.S. market, which is, you know, not irreal for them. So... This fear is, you know, blocking any uh, European banks of working in Iran. So it is true, and and obviously with all these declarations from the U.S. government, they have done nothing to 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 lessen this fear from European banks. So it 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 can be said that it is true, but legally they have not done anything uh, which say they, they, they are not respecting the deal. Hey, anyway, Mr. Mr. Colville, we've, they, we've if, got time for just one more question. Sorry to interrupt you there. I'm sorry, sorry, um, sorry. The, no, the U.S., I mean, when uh, President Donald Trump came to power, he described it as the worst deal ever. Just concretely, why would they decide then, if it's such a bad deal, uh, why has America decided to, to let it lie uh, for now at least? I think, it, you know, everyone knows the answer. You know, he, he, he said things that, you know, he didn't think about it before. Uh, everyone agrees that it's a good deal. So yeah, I think he's, you know, all the declarations, anti-Iranian declarations, yeah, are, are a strategy to hide the fact that they're respecting the deal. and They, they will not go to get out. So, uh, But what I wanted to say that if they impose more sanctions in Iran, that will become dangerous because on the Iranian side, they can say, you know, listen, we have respected the deal, and the deal was, okay, we, we decrease the size of our nuclear program in exchange, no more sanctions. If the U.S. votes more sanctions, you know, the, the reaction from the Iranian side, especially the, the radicals in Iran, can be, you know, why should we respect the deal if the U.S. does not? Okay, Mr. Colville, you're a specialist on Iran. Speaking to France 24 today, thanks for your time.